Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And uh, the painting I'm bringing you today for this uh, demonstration is called Autumn Path, October. It's an 11 by 14. I painted it, I don't know, maybe last weekend? Um, well, the drawing portion you're looking at now has been done for a while. I did that back in... Uh, Ooh, the 12, 21st, so a uh, week before, and then um, the other bit uh, not so long ago, 28th, so pretty recent, and I'm real happy with it. It came out, uh, well, I, I'll be honest with you, there it's going to go up on the easel again. Um, I didn't want to hold it up for that, though, because that could be a while. I like to make sure things are real dry, and also, hey, maybe you can take a tip off of this. I like to... You know, I've I've talked at length about the dangers of putting a painting back up on the easel, um, and it's certainly if you know when you you get it to the point where I got this one, I knew that there were things I'm going to need to do uh, with wet paint over dry, and um, the thing is, like I know what those things are right now, but I I like to look at the painting for a while, and there are times when I decide. No, it's not worth the risk. And what do you mean by risk? You're saying, well, risk. You're a professional. Yeah, I'm a professional. Let me tell you, I can overwork paintings just as easily as you can. Um, I mean, the the main difference is I've done it. I've overworked so many paintings now that I'm, I'm, you know, I feel the sting. I feel that acute awareness when I look at many works, some of which sold and, you know, people liked a lot. But I looked at them and knew they were at a nicer state. Um, and that I'd taken them too far. So that's not a great feeling. It's not as bad a feeling as just doing a terrible painting. Um, but it's not a great feeling because you have some control over that. And uh, there's a lot of things that go into creating a good painting. In fact, um, I'm going to get in back in some Edgar Payne, but we're going to do his introduction, which is called The Approach to Art. And I was reading a little bit of that. And he's, he's so brilliant. And we're going to... One of the main points he makes there uh, is that composing composition is art. You can't separate it. And that's one of the reasons why um, it may seem that he's getting a bit philosophical and kind of wide-ranging when he talks about composition. But you're talking about composing a work of art. Now, if this was a musical score, there would be a lot of things that would go into that. This is composing a picture, and there's a lot of elements that go into it that have to be sound. You have to have um, your forms uh, in balance and in the right basic spot. Uh, you need to have a harmonious approach to your values. And then your color needs to be um, effective and consistent with, uh, of course, the ideal that you maybe envisioned before you started. Um, in this case, I was definitely after this kind of muted sepia-ish, but uh, greens, uh, everything's very dusky and a bit um, dirty, but not dirty in the negative sense of the word, dirty in the positive sense of the word, where the colors are, are muted and complex, and um, so many of my colors end up being like that. I, I tend to like my colors uh, not that straightforward, uh, which is funny, because if you talk about music and chord progressions and my compositions there, I tend to like fairly straightforward chords and straightforward compositions. I might do a major seventh or something every now and again. But anyway, I digress. Um, before we jump into Edgar, though, let's talk about this painting a bit. So um, I've done a lot of vertical of my 14s lately. Uh, this will be uh, hopefully getting into my show if I get it completed. Um, I just uh, had frames around that size. I got a good deal on some frames that are kind of ornate. But I have simple, uh, plain uh, kind of uh, frames that are tasteful, Italian frames as well. So I knew I wanted to, uh, when I put this upcoming show, that I wanted to hit some of my 14s. And I have to say, and this is something in that pro the project I've been working on recently, I've been talking about um, cropping and proportion uh, quite a lot. And uh, it's so critical, it's so vital, it's easy to overlook. You think it doesn't matter, but it really does. The size of the rectangle that you're seeing is going to occupy is maybe the most important th uh, factor um, in the success of your composition. And, but n just saying it's the most important factor doesn't mean that you need to stress about it or belabor that decision. But 
everything else you do in your painting is going to be a reflection of that decision because that is the boundary um, that contains your art so um, and, and this is what I was working on this week with uh, with uh, the project I've been working on is you know uh, giving examples of one reference image cropped as a vertical cropped as horizontal um, and cropped into the various different uh, standard type of frame sizes and um, proportions you know um, and the differences that, that are created um, from that. A lot of times, uh, in fact, I just did a uh, yesterday, and I'm working on one that's a 12 by 16. I'd originally composited the art as a 12 by 18, but I had a 12 by 16 board prepped. So what did I do? I mean, I got it up in Photoshop and says, well, what's this look like with an inch missing from each side? And it turned out it wasn't that big a deal, you know? Um, it, it will be missing a little bit of breadth, you know, a little bit of breadth. That's one of the reasons I prefer 12 by 18, which is a 2 times 3 proportion, to 12 by 16, which is a little more squarish. But 12 by 16 is the standard frame size, and I happen to have quite a few nice uh, 12 by 16 frames around. So 12 by 16 it was, and uh, the trade-offs I made I think are going to be fine. You know, 12 by, you could even like, uh, you know, one of the big challenges is say 8 by 10 is a horizontal. It's almost a square. It, you really have to make some trade-offs to make that work as a horizontal. As a vertical, it's brilliant in getting around to my point. Same thing goes for 11 by 14. As a horizontal, it just doesn't feel optimal to me. I would rather go with something like a 12 by 16, which has got a little more width to it. Um, but for uh, a, a, a vertical uh, portrait uh, sort of orientation, 11 by 14 is one of my favorites, absolutely. 11 by 14, 8 by 10, those are my two favorites for verticals. And I haven't done that many, um, I have gone as far as uh, 12 by 16 vertical, um, 12 by 18 vertical things to get kind of skinny and weird, uh, which I don't think is good on, on a vertical painting. Um, and I've gone as big as 12 by 16. I don't think I painted a vertical much larger than that, you know. Um, anyway, that's the deal with this painting. And it's not a sepia tone painting at all. Um, I've got uh, a bunch of different things going on. But the overall effect will be one of umberness. Um, and there was a heck of a lot of umber used in the creation of this work. And you might wonder before we get into this book here, what is it I'm going to do? Uh, on that next color path. Uh, basically, just over where that sky is, I want to paint a few branches. Okay, it's going to be so much easier when that paint is dry. Um, a few little leaves here and there over the top of the sky. And then there's a couple other spots where I want to maybe add a bit of highlight. Um, but I don't want to go too far because this painting has a bit of a flat feeling and that was intentional and I want to keep a lot of that. I don't want to have it everything too, um, you know, 3D looking. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's get into some Edgar, uh, and we'll see how long it takes us to get through his little front uh, section here. It took a heck of a long time to get through the the back, because um, I'm always interrupting the guy and, and adding my two cents. But hey, Edgar, it's my channel, my video. Go do your own video. <laughs> By the way, the name of this book is called Composition of Outdoor Painting. It's not an expensive book. It's a little hardbound. Uh, it's been in print for a long time, and there's a good reason for that. It's an exceptional book. If you don't own it, go buy it, and uh, you'll see what I mean. Um, it won't make your study of composition. Uh, it won't. Uh, it's not like a night, at night and day kind of thing where you're instantly better, but you'll get insights. You'll get better, you know. How much better? Maybe it depends on you. I didn't get tons better when I first got this book 10 years ago. Um, in fact, I did quite a few uh, paintings of the Bismal compositions. But, you know, sometimes it takes a while for things to sink in. So we're on page 1, chapter 1. The approach to art, origin and purpose. All creative endeavor is toward a definite purpose. Therefore, it is imperative that we have a definite conception of this purpose, as well as a clear understanding of the means that accomplish this end. And that, you know, that language is a little stilted for us as moderns. I mean, how I would put that is like, 
like I do. I know uh, when I set up my photo where I want to go with the painting. And there's so many things that might be in a photo that I'm not going to paint. I'm not talking about making an exact copy of that painting. But I have an idea, like, oh, this will be a purple green. Or in the case of this painting, I'm going to be riffing off the umber. I'm going to riff into the reds, and I'm going to riff into the greens. But I'm not going anywhere near blues or purples or um, things like super bright oranges or any of that. Actually, I do get some oranges, but uh, I digress. Let's get back to um, Edgar. Quality in fine pictures is dependent on a knowledge and a respect for the elements which create it. Actually, a fine painting is a composite of all its factors and influences. Bringing these together to form this composite creates the process of composing. What a brilliant guy, huh? Hence, and this is in caps, I mean uh, bold, um, hence the study of composition is a matter of studying art and all its factors and influences. So he just made the study of composition the study of art. Boom. So you might go, oh, I'm not the interested in composition. Well, then you're not interested in doing paintings because that's the crux of it. You know, if your composition's wrong or poor, it um, doesn't matter how good your color is. It doesn't matter how... Um, balanced your values are. It doesn't matter uh, what sort of glorious and flourishing brushwork you accomplished. It's all accomplished over a structure that's inadequate and that's not good. So definitely um, and you know I mean we're gonna get back into this book hopefully a little bit but um, what what are ways that you can learn composition and, and learn it better um, one of the best ways, I think, is by making uh, small studies after the masters. Um, one of the reasons why you might look at painting and say, well, the master created this, is because they have a masterful grasp of composition. And you get that muscle memory built in. A lot of times, when you, if, you, if you've ever seen, uh, and I, my channel is full of studies after the masters, I mean, it just goes on and on. And in, in recent times, I haven't done that many, but I started the channel. Go back to 2014-15. Um, I started with the 100 Days of Tonalism. And I have to say that there was no other project that I've ever done that uh, increased the quality of my artwork more. I was one painter before uh, doing the 100 Days of Tonalism, and I was another painter after. And I have since evolved, made a lot of uh, evolutions and a lot of steps forward. Um, but that was certainly the most uh, fundamental. So that's one thing you can do. And a lot of times, you know, frankly, you don't need to make full-blown paintings. You could just be looking at a little painting of a master, draw yourself a little rectangle, and start working out how they broke down the shapes. Because really, composition is a story that's told with the large shapes, mostly. The little shapes, they don't have such a large... Um, they do have a, a factor, especially, say, if they have a lot more contrast or color than the objects around them, then you can't help but notice them. But you'll always uh, notice the big shapes first, and then uh, those are the things that have to be in balance and harmony. Um, in this painting I'm doing, it's all about these, uh, the two, uh, well, the two trees, right? Um, there's a th third, fourth, fifth tree. Um, there's a third tree right in the middle between the two, and of course it's a little off-center. Um, I believe in the reference that was exactly centered between those two. Also, the way that I chose to subdivide the picture plane into thirds like that um, wasn't necessarily uh, exactly like the reference either. Although, when I did crop the reference and was working with the reference, I was definitely trying to get things into position. And you know, just as an aside, um, I don't hesitate. In fact, I believe I inserted this path into the scene. I don't think it has a very attractive one in the original reference photo. So uh, I probably took a, uh, you know, a little further down the path. I probably took a photo of that path and, and popped it into this uh, because I like the um, composition of the trees, right? Um, but one thing I never do is insert trees. That never seems to work out. Um, so just an aside for you there, just uh, not even really a tip. I mean, go and try it, and maybe you'll get it to work. Um, I certainly have tried a couple times, but um, inserting things like paths, uh, little streams, uh, that seems to work just fine. Um, another little tip before we go is like, um, you can see that the bottom of the path seems wide, but much, much wider in the reference, and that would have been 
a um, uh, sort of an effect uh, created by the focal length of the whoops oh we're getting a little bit of audio on this last one didn't get muted anyway it's time to go thank you for joining me today check this out in the members area it's going to be you know, about three hours long but the members area is quite reasonable um, until I get back with another video do me a favor do me a solid take good care of yourself and your family and your loved ones and stay out of trouble